The entire McCann case has become a phenomenon. If you made a dozen movies out of this, nobody would believe them. I've done thousands of cases. With the Madeleine case, I've seen the worst things a human being can see. The worst. There's fear that a three-year-old British girl has been abducted in Portugal. If your child isn't safe at a resort, where is she safe? The media made their daughter the most high-profile missing child in the world. Some individuals represented a significant person of interest. Police say they are now treating a British man as a suspect. They wanted me to confess. I actually felt I was being set up. The police had suspicions that there was some collusion happening during the night that Maddie went missing. This could be the breakthrough. Here it is, it all fits. Statistically, it's likely to be someone who is in close proximity with the child. The McCanns and their friends revised their timeline. There is no way Kate and I are involved in this abduction. The police leaked information to the press. Those cops lied to me. Then there was a surprise. The head of the investigative unit was under investigation himself. One startling element is the sheer number of sexual predators in the area at the time. It's very easy to move children to other countries. Human trafficking is a massive problem. The value that Madeline had was really high. There's always something left to do till you find her. Somebody knows what's happened to Madeline McCann. Welcome to today's episode of Madeline McCann. We promise to investigate this heartbreaking story thoroughly and try to find answers to the many questions surrounding her disappearance. The McCann family, consisting of Jerry, a dedicated physician, and Kate, a compassionate general practitioner, went on a long-awaited vacation in the quaint town of Praia de Luz, Portugal. They were seeking some respite from their demanding professions and wanted to create cherished memories with their three children, including the youngest member, three-year-old Madeline. Jerry and Kate, both British citizens, were drawn to Praia de Luz's serene ambience, hoping to enjoy quality time with their family under the Portuguese sun. The McCanns, known for their devotion to their children, reveled in the chance to share laughter, build sandcastles, and explore the narrow streets of the coastal town. The family rented a holiday apartment, immersing themselves in the local culture and savoring the simplicity of life away from the hustle and bustle of their everyday routines. Little did they know, this idyllic retreat would soon transform into the backdrop of a harrowing ordeal. As the sun dipped below the horizon on May 3rd, 2007, the McCanns and friends decided to dine at a nearby tapas restaurant, leaving their three children, including Madeline, sleeping in the holiday apartment. They took turns checking on them at regular intervals. At 9.30 p.m. that night, Matthew Oldfield, a fellow diner, offered to check on the McCann's children. He went to see how his kids were doing in the apartment next door and came back to say everything was fine. When Kate gets back to the apartment at 10 o'clock at night after eating, she discovers that the kids' bedroom door is left ajar. Just as she goes to close it a little, a gust of wind slams it shut. Every parent's worst nightmare comes true when their three-year-old daughter is taken from her bed and leaves no trace. Panic and confusion gripped the McCanns as they realized Madeline was missing. The once cheerful vacation atmosphere became a frantic search for their beloved daughter. The night sky, once filled with stars, now bore witness to the anguish of a family thrust into an unimaginable nightmare. News of Madeline's disappearance spread rapidly, capturing the attention of local authorities, media outlets, and volunteers worldwide. A report of a missing person was made. She had blonde hair, blue-green eyes, a small brown stain on her left calf, and a dark stripe that stood out on her right iris. The McCanns, desperate to find their daughter, joined forces with law enforcement and the community in a massive search. Police were called to the border, airport staff were notified, and hundreds of volunteers joined the search for Madeline over the next few days. The resort town of Praia de Luz became an epicenter of an international investigation, with the world collectively holding its breath for any news about the missing three-year-old. Day and night, volunteers combed the streets, beaches, and surrounding areas, hoping for a breakthrough. The once serene town now echoed with the sounds of footsteps, distant conversations, and the fervent prayers of those hoping for Madeline's safe return. In the weeks that followed, sniffer dogs were brought in to aid in the search. 
They discovered bloodstains on a wall in the McCann's vacation apartment and initially admitted that Madeline might not be alive. The police acknowledged that she might not be alive 100 days after she vanished. The story took a turn when Oldfield, a member of the Top of Seven, claimed he saw Robert Murat, who became the prime suspect in the case. Murat renounced having any involvement in Madeline's disappearance, and no accusations were ever officially filed against him. Murat is featured in the recent Netflix documentary, The Disappearance of Madeline McCann. But no evidence was ever found that Murat was linked to Madeline's disappearance, and he was officially and legally no longer deemed a suspect. It wasn't until September 7, 2007, when Kate and Jerry McCann were officially named as Arguidos, or official suspects, in their daughter's disappearance, that the story took a drastic turn. Again, it is pretty odd in this investigation that it took them almost a year to conclude that they were not suspects. After many months, despite their desire not to leave without their daughter, the couple returned to the United Kingdom with their two-year-old twins, Sean and Emily. A formal apology from the Daily Express for their alleged involvement in their daughter's disappearance made Kate and Jerry the front page news in 2008. In July of 2008, Portugal's Attorney General archived the case due to lack of evidence. At first, the McCann couple perceived a significant lack of effort by the Portuguese police to prioritize finding their missing daughter and not give up. An appeal was filed in 2009, the year Jerry initially made his way back to Portugal. Later this year, after returning to the UK, they appeared with Oprah Winfrey to commemorate two years since their daughter vanished. The couple turned to the UK government for help and released a book, Madeline, to keep her in the public eye for as long as possible. They continued using private detectives until Scotland Yard opened their own investigation, Operation Grange. It was the goal of Operation Grange to review the previous investigations conducted into the disappearance of Madeline McCann. In light of the bittersweet relationship between Portuguese and British police, the work done to try to collaborate with the Portuguese authority is not something that is remembered fondly. In October 2016, the Metropolitan Police team investigating Madeleine McCann's case was reduced from 29 full-time officers to four. Hundreds of thousands of pounds are spent each year searching for Madeleine, and 13 million pounds have been spent since 2011. This prioritized smaller lines of inquiry until new evidence could be found. In a BBC documentary in 2017, the couple vowed to do whatever it takes in order to find their daughter for as long as it takes. Then, in 2020, 13 years after her disappearance, a new suspect emerged with the most noteworthy breakthrough at that time. Police in Germany brought a German convicted sex offender to light who might have played a role in Madeline's disappearance, a man named Christian Bruckner. Christian Bruckner was officially quoted as a suspect in April 2022 after his yellow and white camper van was reportedly spotted near the Praia de Luz Resort in Portugal, where Maddie vanished. Investigators consider Bruckner, who is defined as a drifter with a past of sexual violence, kidnapped and then killed Madeline. The convicted sex offender has always denied the case and insists that police are trying to frame him for the crime. The disappearance of Madeline McCann has lasted a heart-wrenching 16 years. As each year passes, the couple can only hang on to the very little hope they have of their daughter still being found. In May 2023, Madeline turned 20 and has spent a total of 17 years without her family. Jerry and Kate McCann posted a poem on their Find Madeline website, reminding readers that they still miss their daughter very much. The McCann family, together with the police and the public, continues to search for Madeline. After moments turn into minutes, minutes into hours, hours into days, days into months, months into years, and so on, her fate is still unknown even 10 years later. Despite the global attention and ongoing efforts, the mystery surrounding Madeline McCann's disappearance persists. That fateful night changed the family's life forever, leaving an indelible mark in Praia de Luz that transcended national boundaries. The unanswered questions linger, haunting the McCanns as those who followed the case as the world grapples with the mystery that continues to elude resolution. We hope you found Madeline McCann's story both insightful and thought-provoking. If you appreciate our content, please take a moment to hit the like button and subscribe. Leave your queries in the comments section. Stay tuned and keep in touch with us to discover what intriguing mysteries we'll be delving into next.